Okay, good morning. Uh, thanks, thanks for attending uh, this tutorial. I um, hope it's going to be very beneficial to, to all of us, including me. And uh, Stephen, uh, Stephen Chu is, is uh, an expert in Julia. He um, was a, an intern at Umas AI. Which is a company um, uh, owned, I guess, by uh, Chris Rakalkas, uh, who is uh, probably the biggest proponent of Julia for scientific machine learning. Uh, you might uh, know him by name. So, um, so uh, Stephen uh, joined the, our graduate program. Uh, is uh, this fall, and we are very happy to have him for several reasons. One of them is that um, he can uh, share his wisdom on Julia for scientific machine learning. And um, so, the way the way that the tutorial is going to work is, um, he, uh, you know, we have a audience here in person. And, and you know, you can ask questions at any time. There's a mic that's gonna pick up your, your, your questions. So people on Zoom will be able to, to hear your question and also be picked up on the recording, but only one person can speak at a time. Otherwise the mic will not uh, capture. Um, the, for, the, for the people attending on Zoom, then uh, you can put your questions on, on the chat in the chat box, uh, and uh, Stephen is going to try to uh, get to them as soon as possible. But you know we may we may not be able to get an answer in real time. Okay. Uh, so so that's uh, basically the, uh, the ground rules. And with that, please, Stephen. Okay. Thanks for coming today. Uh, so to your first uh, results here, we have a website and you can follow the URL or the QR code here. You can say it's a great website. All the slides and source codes, Jupiter's um, here. And today we will have like, two separate parts. The first part is the presentations. We're going to get a brief introduction about what the media and uh, some packages frameworks about the Julia is HTML system. And it's, we'll have a semi break, and the second part is the capitalization. So, let's go to the presentation today. We we'll have a brief introduction about what is Julia. So today we are going to introduce the Julia programming language and just uh, a brief uh, remark. We will uh, have these two sections and we'll have, here's a QR code we can access to the web, website, all the great, great resources here. And we're going to start this presentation about Julia. Like, uh, first of all, what is Julia? The Julia is the high performance programming language and it supports the just in time compilation. Uh, if you had uh, any of you here have any experience about Python programming language, just raise your hands. Cool. And we will have, uh, if you read write Python, there is a, uh, a pa 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 package called Numba. You can compile your Python code into C shorts. And just in time is a similar one. You can compile and do the wrong time at the same time. But the second time, you can run the code with machine code. Yeah, isn't that called Cython in, in Python? Uh, no, Cython, yeah. And I would say Cython is an interface with a C. And okay. but it has uh, just in time compilation yeah, as well. I would say Cython is better than Python because you have more code to com com compile, and PP mm -hmm. is also uh, often tips for Python to get. Better speed because you can work for machine codes. And number is a way like you can write in Python codes 
and use the decoration to transfer your function into C code. Uh, so it's an interface to uh, to transfer your high level language to low level language. And the second feature about Julia is you it uses a multiple dispatch to achieve functional pro pro programming. We will take over uh, talk about this more later. And because we use a multiple dispatch, it can know which function name it, it should call when you get a variable into the function. So it can support a lot of function with the same name, a different data type. You can have like add function with an integer or a double, but they call ADD. It's okay for Julia because it has a model display. You can find the best way to run function. And the final one is, is Julia is a high level syntax. So it's learning Julia is still just like learning Python. But what makes Julia different is that you can approach to the uh to the low level code you can generate machine code when it after it first run so julia can be uh can it is a generic and it's a high performance program language to, it's it's advantage so there's a quick look about the multiple dispatch when we look at this code uh it's defined the function of multiply we because it's a high level language high level presentation we don't know what is the data type of A and B argument. And we will just implement it. It's just like writing Python. But what makes Julia different is that when we run this code with two integer arguments, one and one, we can use the, the Julia can generate the LLVM machine codes to run this function. When we use a decor, uh, the macro here, LLV, code LLVN to know what's, um, what machine code generate, we can found it actually coding the integer 64 to run this command. And how about if we change the arguments, uh, like here is integer and output is in, integer. If we change our argument become float and integer, the machine codes will be different here. The LLVN code we can see it's double and integer. It is a uh, a nice way to run a, a function is because you know the data type, so you don't need to allocate the void or the a large chunk of memory to the heap. You only need to call the double and integer. They can reduce the memory allocation, the, the, the time for the memory allocation. And over here is a double. So the most the significant feature is that the Julia, um, we, we can approach the machine code, but Julia also uh, has a space and standard library is written by Julia itself. It sounds really weird, right? Like when we think about Python, we, we use the NumPy and we run a NumPy code, but what's under the hood? Under the hood of a NumPy is C and Fortran. But when you run the C, the Julia codes under the hood, it's Julia. It's basically building a high level language with the low level implementation. So the downside, the down to the top is all Ju Julia. So you, you don't need to learn two language because when you write like NumPy, you want faster, you, you have different idea about algorithm, you will need to back to the C or Fortran to accomplish the task. But for Julia, you, you, you can just reach to the down label Julia, the, the lower label Julia, then Julia. So it's the advantage of using Julia. And it's just in time. You don't need to do like when you write C, you need to compile and then run. But for Julia, you can use the interactive panel like IPython to uh, test your codes and to try some ideas. So that is our just in time, but you also can use the machine code in the second round. So it uh, includes, it just leverages the interactive, in, interactive and the speed at the same time. And the final remark is that like multiple dispatch, it can uh, use, um, the junior can know which functions should be called. So you can uh, implement a lot of multiply function or multiple function have the same name, but 
have different algorithms under the hood. So it can call the, um, the right function to, uh, to have more per performance because it can know which function. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. So uh, comparing to Python, so is, is uh, Python also just in time compared to Node? Oh, Python is an uh, interpreting language. Yeah. So it, when you write script in Python, it has a Python interpreter. Right. And it can run its codes, but it doesn't know the data type. Right. So when you write the full loop in Python, it just call the biggest data type you can get. What is the biggest data type in the computer architecture? Right. It's void. And but the void is much bigger than like flow 64 or integer 64. Right. So it's a different size. So when you allocate the void in the heap memory, it will consume more time than uh, allocate like integer yes. 64. So it's, it's just interpreted line line by line, right? Uh, yeah, interpreted line by line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it doesn't know because line by line. So the data type may be trained for next for loop. So right. it just uh, run the code, run the line of codes, and to per proceed it. So it doesn't know the precise da data type. So that's why the just in time needs to come to play because it, it needs to run first, then decide which data type is the best. Yes. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference from the uh, Python. So this makes quite Julia fast because it just in time you can generate machine codes and it support type inference. Just like what I say is like when you code and multiply with integer, code and multiply with floats, it generates different machine codes with the same name in the low uh in the higher label and in the lower label you can call the um the function with the right the pre precise data type. And we can use a function with a type specific, specific specialization to specify which data type should be called. This can be customized. So this makes Julia fast. So uh, another reason to use Julia is that Julia is really just the same as, as like you're using Python. When we look at the for loop here, it's just Python, just for and in. It's really similar to the Python user. And there's another advantage that is extensibility. We were talking about model dispatch. It's a fundamental thing, and type inference is a fundamental thing for extensibility. Think about it. When we're writing a NumPy, you will write some certain algorithms, but you also want to do something about machine learning, like you use the PyTorch. We can find your NumPy have to be replaced with PyTorch NumPy because the outsourcing of packages in Python is weak. They implement and optimize all the code in the inner packages. But when you use the different packages, Python, you, you can write in the same script, but it, it will be really slow because the data type is different. But most of all, the compatibility is really worse. It's really bad for object-oriented design. So extensibility is a, a very different it's an advantage of using Julia because it uses multiple dispatch. If you use package A and package B, then more, two of them have implemented the multiply function, but they have multiply, multiply function with different structure of arguments. It can still be called, and it can, the, the command can still be per proceed with the right data type. And another thing is that if you two packages function come together, the compiler will think again about what's the right data type to use for the mixture of the functions. So extensibility can be achieved by multiple dispatch and optimized by type inference. So this makes Jupyter uh, can write the fast code. So yeah, it's pretty much about the Julia. So we are going to throw an example. When we think about we want, we are going to make a vendor mode matrix. Vendor, ma vendor mode matrix, we have that like given X vector, A alpha one to alpha M, they are all scalars. And we use this factor one by M to create an M by M matrix B. So in the row code, in the, in the column is the polynomial of alpha one to alpha power of N minus one. And in the uh, columns is just from the 
you just calculate the top polynomial from the factor B element wise. So, how to implement these metrics? And you can write C, C plus one. Yeah, it's not hard for this problem, but it's an example. Think about how to write in a high level language in Python. You may want to use the double for loop. It's not a good idea because the for loop is really slow in Python. It's it's interpreted line by line, so it doesn't know the data type, so it's really slow. So you may outsource it to standard library like NumPy. Yeah, fortunately, there is a NumPy that vendor can support this matrix operation. But under the hood, what is what is how the NumPy wrapper vendor is implemented is under the hood is a C wrapper and under the C wrapper is a C code. And the C codes, are, it is uh, written in generic typing, but it can, but it still can uh, support limited data type. It can be supported from float, integer, but if you will have a constant data type, then the NumPy is not for this. The problem of MATLAB, MATLAB there is a vendor uh, function, but what is on, on the hood? No, it's license. You don't know. It. So you just buy the MATLAB and run the vendors. So uh, these are two high level languages disadvantage when implement some everything you want to do. You will get slowly eventually. So writing a high level language is basically just mining in the standard library. Try the old library you have found on the website uh, with the, a certain everything implemented and use those package API, just call those API to get the answer. When we're trying to write a certain algorithm for making these metrics, you may need to uh, write a prototype then back to the C to get the per performance. So this, from the first time, you need to write in a high level language. And if you want performance, you need to write in low-class level language like C or Fortran. This is called the two language problem. We got two language. One is in high, la high level, and the other is the low level language. They have their pros and cons. Like Python and MATLAB, you can have a great flexibility, but bad in performance. And the low level language has very, uh, it's bad in flexibility, but great in the performance. So when you develop an algorithm like vendor mode metrics, you need to write in Python first to check your algorithm is right. Then speed up with a C, C, Fortran, any low level language. And you need to write the record. And if you want to do something more than vendor mode, some complex form vendor mode, you have to go through this process again and again. So this is called two language problem. So, yeah. So, uh, any problems so far? Good. Let's carry on. So, what is Julia comes to, uh, how Julia comes into this process? Like when we try to play this metrics in Julia, we can write Julia codes like from this code block. We can see for the arguments, we can specify the generic type. We want any argument to be a vector array like it's an abstract type. So we don't expect scalar into uh, as an argument. So we specify a certain yeah. uh, like uh, the type of this argument, and we also do the core uh, the core manipulation here is use the star as a multiply with two elements. So you can see uh, in Ju Judea we there's a T here we we specify the parameter parametric of the Argument and t is what the key point here. The t is a parameter is a type parameter, but we implement factor of integer or factor of floats. The t will become integer of floats. The compiler can get the um, data type of the element of x and use this t for the output. So we can eventually return what the data type or whatever the X it is. So this produces an optimized code uh, with the, in, the output and input have the same data type because the 
compiler can get what the data type of input is and get it right, get the exactly the same output. So uh we so when we look at the Julia code, it supports flexibility, but it also supports type specific uh uh type specific design when it runs into the machine codes. But like if, if you use an integer, the factor of integers, it will be have a banter with the factor of integers input. Steven, so here you have a double loop, you have a nested loop, mm -hmm. but this one is stressed. It's not like you have in Python, if you have a nested loop like this, it will be slow. Mm -hmm. But here with this uh, abstract vector, etc., this makes it efficient, right? Yeah, this product is very different. Uh, it's di different from the Python. Because um, when you're doing this for loop, the data type is already different okay. for a second time, uh, for running a second time. Like after the compilation, it will do the regression code. And the for loop will be like for uh, INT1 to INT and I++. So it's a what it do in the low, low class. Oh, sorry, it, it's a C++, but the you know, LBN is very similar for, for, for loop, but it's type. Stable. So, but we're doing the Python. You were doing this line by line. So, and remember that this little Python can store anything inside. So, when you run the next line, you have no idea what's the data type inside that command. It may be allocate integer for this iteration. For next iteration, it may need to allocate the object. Yeah. So, uh. Um, so when writing Python, you need to keep away from the for loop. You need to use factorization. You need to use NumPy to just avoid the for loop. That's a key to write fast code in Python. But in Julia, you just write for loop and make sure it's type stable. You can see the type doesn't change here because we only use the type from the argument. We all, and we even don't know what's the type of argument. It can be any type. But in C++, you can write the similar codes, exactly. but you need to specify this double yeah. integer. Yes. You, can, you can use template, but yeah. uh, the template will be the other word, the, 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 the other story. So yeah. the Julia is a way to write a generic programming, but also approach to the low level, uh, low level, uh, 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 low level wrong, wrong time. The efficiency. Yeah, the efficiency here. Yeah. So uh, what if we don't need performance? We only want to, our research works. We only want to make more codes runnable. And for classical problem, Python and Man MATLAB are good now. It's really good because when you call the vendor mode, under the hood is C. So whatever you implement in Julia, it can only achieve the speed of like C and Fortran. So you can still have a very uh, high performance when you're using NumPy. But what if you are implementing something very hard problem, complex problem, novel, uh, novel research? You need to implement a new algorithm. And this time, you have to sacrifice the performance to get it done. So when the and when you implement the new algorithm, you may need some performance because you need to apply it to the big data set or very complex problem, uh, com 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 complex scenario. And this time the performance needed. And for this moment, you may need to change the C++ CO portrait. So you, you, you need to jump to totally different language, low level language to, to uh, give back your performance. So this is a two language problems where you develop an average. So the Julia comes into this place that it conjugate these two developed. You can just write the 10 Julia, the simple, Algorithm for prototyping and use Julia for uh, high performance uh, de 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 development. So, this is why uh, I really want to share about this idea because it's uh, really useful for the research. And when, especially, you are going to develop like uh, algorithms or uh, some, and you really not want some high per performance, and Julia is a way to, to do it. So when you're using Julia, you may consider like 
I have familiar with Python, familiar everything with Python, and I know a lot of like packages here. But can I get the same package in Panda in, in the in Julia? Uh, yes, and Julia has the 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 the, the first like Julia has like the Python in uh, bridge to Python, C, and functions. And there are also numerous packages is totally written in Julia. Like pandas, we have data frames.jl. And if you are familiar with the Mapody, it has like pass.jl. And for the later, we were going to introduce the differential equation.jl is uh, basically for solving the differential equations. So like SciPy uh, has this all these solvers, but the differential equation has a lot of all these solvers. All kinds of all, all these solvers are already implemented in the differential equation. That, that's it. So it's a milestone. Uh, it's basically the most important package in Julia. We were going deep of, about this package. So I'm um, machine learning wave plus dot dot L and authentication. We have like John and authentication dot L. So how can you get started? Like you can uh you can reach my website here which I, I have this a lot of learning re re resources but if you want uh ask me what is my favorite within Julia is I most re re recommended way to learn Julia because it's basically come from the same ideology of thinking Python. So you can follow the single similar idea to learn the Julia. And the second one is uh the MIT course from Dr. Chris Rockhouse, it had more technical uh, introduction to how to write parallel computing and how to use it for scientific machine learning in Julia. So that's pretty much my introduction about the Julia. And I really uh, welcome for like comments and quick, quick, quick questions here. I know it's a really brand new language and it's a new, new idea. And is there any question on the online section? Let me see. Uh, sure. Yeah, just something that just uh, mm -hmm. flashes. Mm -hmm. What is asking about the video, video and audio? No. Yeah. yeah. And I just let me know if you have questions here. And if you want to learn more about the Julia language, you know, uh, I have this a lot of like I recommend you learning to those here. Just click it and you can learn uh, the. Uh, more about it, Julia. Yeah, the, the, cor the course by uh, Chris Rakopas is, is very good. I I recommend, you know, mm. to everyone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we can prepare, uh, for example, if we make some prototype of uh, model and some kind of operations in Julia, can we uh, extract it into or prepare some kind of Part of library to other languages, like Python, for example, can we use the promise of Julia uh, as a wrapper, not uh, oh. just for other languages? Yeah, uh, that's pretty much how the Ju Ju Julia tried to do in the early, early stage. The differential equation that they uh -huh. is uh, much better than the ODs or within the sci-fi. So at that time, they just create a record. For that package, and you can code the Julia from Python. Uh, that is a way to you use Ju Julia in your Python project because when you are trying to do specific algorithm just for uh to, to, just for that part, and you, you don't need to iterate that, and you can just code the Julia from Python there and just get drop down, then just stick to the Python. That is what we use by the records. Yeah, it's cool. So um, we are talking about Julia and we're talking about the extensibility of the Julia language. And we are going to like about a specific field called scientific machine learning. Before going deep into this um, topic, I have to emphasize that Julia is a generic programming, pro programming language. It's designed for scientific computing, but it's generic, it's too incomplete. 
it's just like Python. So people may use Julia for web design or gaming. It's not mature, but Julia provides some certain insight about how to do, like how to write fast code. So it pro 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 provides different advantage with a high level language. It is so there are a lot of fields just uh, developing at this moment because they want to use the Julia in different fields and uh, leverage the advent of Julia to try different things. And the scientific machine learning is the most iconic part of the um, application of Julia because it requires a lot of package to come together. It can integrate two words, two separate words, numerical methods and machine learning. They have different uh, group and even different packages. One is written in PyTorch and TensorFlow, and the numerical methods community, they are written in four channels C. How to combine this together? And Julia is the key. I will tell you why in this, pre -pre in this presentation. And before going about the package, let's look at about this data. Like we have time series data. And it's actually telling uh, about the infectious disease. There's a certain disease spreading in the village. And we have three types of um, people. And the first one is as susceptible groups. It's, known, it's healthy and it's normal people. And infected population is uh, infected by certain disease. You can say it's COVID or certain kind of disease. And it, Finally, we covered the count R symbols here. So this is a three-dimensional OD problem. It has uh, the U with dimension of three in factor. So we have uh, like we can record how many people get infected in the village from the day zero to day 40. And we want to know what will happen in the future before it is too late to do any policy in interference. Um, for doing the prediction, we will think about the two approach. Machine learning with a data driven uh, uh, approach. We don't know what is going on inside the differential view. So we want to use a neural network to approximate the dynamics. And we use a like, certain approximator called NN, and it can approximate the, the wrong true process of the disease spreading. And the second method is called physical modeling. We know how the disease is spreading. We assume there is some physical loads uh, of disease spreading. So we just compose a function of F and use the U and P and T as an argument to calculate the differential and, to, uh, and use the, the parameter at the moment to get the parameters here then predict the future. These are two methods, two different methodology to achieve the prediction. So they are also different in the implementation. Like when you use the machine learning, you may need to try uh, different estimators. And convolutional neural network is a good choice because it's a universal approximator. Any neural network with the single label there it can approximate any continuous function. We can assume the data is a continuous function. So we can use the neural network to approximate the process. And another method is called physical modeling. And we can use the physical loads. Like here, we can assume the uh, infectious force is like beta multiplied with the, uh, like multiplied with the infected people. So these two methods have their methods have their pros and cons. Like for a data-driven approach, they, they can achieve universal approximation, but the disadvantage is that it needs tremendous data to train. And when we look back about the, uh, the disease spreading in the village, it only happens once. It only happens from day zero to day four. You cannot repeat that, that experiment because what you got is this 40 points, 40 days. And if you have a neural network with many parameters, you will definitely get overview. And for physical modeling, uh, we have small data set. We, we only need small data set and it's interpretable. But the disadvantage is that you will need to require 
analytical solution, analytical expression to uh, to de de describe the process. And uh, sometimes it's really hard to describe the complexity of the nature. It doesn't need to be analytical. It, uh, it, it can sometimes can be expressed analytically. And some, uh, some like the complex of nature, you may, you may need to uh, use very complicated equations, or sometimes you need to surrogate it, use a simpler uh, use some uh, assumption to lower the dimension and to get the ODE solvable. Or it can really hard to solve the ODE if, if your model is really complex. So these two words have their pros and cons. And however, uh, so the scientific machine is ideas. There, there, there's one field called universal differential equations. It's a combine these two words. Just if, if we don't know a certain part in the in the physical model, we we'll just use a neural network to surrogate. So that is idea. But in the implementation, how to do it? When you do use it right in like in Python, the left one is maybe PyTorch or TensorFlow, and the right one will be uh, NumPy or S or SciPy or DE. These two words, how to how to combine these two together? That is a question, and that, that is why we need to use the Julia for this for this kind of problem. So, um, the scientific machining is designed for this task. Like it's an open source. Uh, so software and it leverage the type experience and multiple deep dispatch of Julia language. Just what I say in the, in the previous pre presentation, we can use uh, Julia's TensorFlow or Julia's NumPy and to combine it together and use type experience to get a static type in the machine code. So, and this ecosystem supports a lot of types here, but I think these three is the most important one in the following hands on section. The first one is for differential equation solving. It supports a lot of ODE solvers. And you can build the ODE with a neural network inside it. it and it, it is called physical informed model. And you can accomplish it with the deep EQ plus. And we can use a parameter estimation or Bayesian analysis and or a symbolic regression with the data driven deep EQ. And they are totally 174 pages in this uh, ecosystem. This is an outline of the how the ecosystem looks like. There are a lot of like higher level packages and there are also lower level languages. Like uh, the division equations.zero is the fundamental package for this whole process because it solves the division equations. But this division equation doesn't need to be analytically expressed. It can be, uh, differential equation with a neural network. It doesn't matter because it's still a function code. It's still like calling function. So let's back to the uh, the example, the infectious disease. When we have a one through model, it looks like this. It's a nonlinear differential equations. We use this model to generate data, but we actually, we only partially know the, how the this mechanism looks like. For epidemiologists, we maybe know uh, the model maybe is, looks like this. It's a prior knowledge about the ODE structure. So what we don't know is that how to calculate the infectious force with the infected group and with uh, the, the beta and gamma is a two constant parameter we can, we know from the papers. So we want to calculate these three parameters, these three arguments into infectious force. So that's uh, the question, how to do that. And we have a prior structure of the ODE model and we have the data. So we can actually make this lambda to be a certain approximator. We call it lambda and then it's a approximated lambda and apply the data with this ODE function to get the optimal Bayesian decision for this lambda. So this is called the universal ordinary differential equation. When we use the approximator uh, with the neural network, 
is a universal approximator because by the universal approximator terms theory, we can use a single layer of your label to approximate any continuous function. So this is a way to surrogate uh, to to write an alternative model of the truth model, and we have the data so we can know how to decide the how the lambda n looks like. So this is basically about uh, how to implement in the Julia. But so we can see there are different things just come together. The first one is the current state, like the scale, the parameters and the current U as I R, they are in respect of T. And the second part is the convolution, convolutional neural network. It's basic, basically a function code. It's, uh, so you just code this function and with the uh, parameters and you can get the approximated lambda. And the final part is the, we use the lambda, approximated lambda and to uh, derive uh, the SIR, the next time state of the, uh, the differential of the state. So this is how the universal differential equations are uh, in implemented. So is there any questions here? Okay, each of the ideas about what's going on so far. So, so why, why do you use a convolutional neural network? Yeah, uh, we were trying to approximate a certain process inside the ordinary differential equations. Right. So we need the approximation. Right. And it, we know it's, we assume it's con continuous uh, function and we want to find approximator. So uh, is there any estimate that can approximate any continuous uh, continuous yeah. function? Yeah. The composition your network is a way to do it. SBN is another way to do it. Yeah, you, you could use a dense network as well. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Dense, dense network or or any other mm -hmm. uh, network. So that there's no specific reason. I mean, why you, you have to choose a convolution neural network, right? I mean, you can use a, a like a fully connected. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So if I understood correctly, you're doing a uh, parameter estimation inside your OD solver. Yeah, is that right? So you're trying to determine what the, you know the general lambda. Yeah, without yeah. any prior yeah. information. Yeah, the only difference is that the OD layers of new network inside the OD. Right. Yeah. Oh, and uh, we can use any estimators, but for computationally, we need the estimate to be differentiable. Yeah. So okay. random forest decision tree uh, is same some uh, we, we cannot use random forest because it's not differentiable. But yeah. SVN is differentiable, so we can use yeah. SVN or your network as long as it's differentiable, we can use it. Okay. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on the, the training data? Mm -hmm. What is the training data? Uh, the training data is looks like here. We have okay. sampling yeah. a time point here, so it's not continuous. Just then, uh, from zero days to zero to 40 days and sampling each days. So that led the training data. And we also have the T. So it's basically from uh, the, it's zero to 40 days and with time zero to 40. So that is the training data. And we have a differential equations here. This is a quantum model. So this one is the, uh, how we know the structure. And we want to know how to calculate the incremental force. Thank you. Yeah. And it's correct. So to achieve this tag, we need a lot of packages. When, when we talk about packages, it's uh, quite different because this each package have their own purpose originally. So the way it comes to the scientific machine learning, it just use the functions, use the algorithm uh, of these packages and to become uh, and everything, and it can be a type stable. Like all this over, we use the different different equation dot dot zero, and the neural networks we have flux and locks to to create the neural network. And when we look at this function, this function is an ODE function, and we want to optimize it. Optimize it when you, when when it comes to neural network, we can do gradient descent. When you use like ordinary deep, deep differential equations with a neural network. How to calculate the gradient 
is a key to the optimization. How to create the gradient with the combined neural network with OD? For now, we only know we have a function. So we need a certain method to calculate the gradient from the source code to the differential type of the function. That is called automatic differential equation, uh, differentiation. And the Zygos supports forward and reverse automatic differentiation. It can produce the differential type of the function from the source code. And the purpose of the Zygo is for doing that, for doing it, this, and you can combine to this process to get the gradient. And once you get a gradient, the next thing we want to do is the optimization, because we are really care about how to approximate the infectious force. And the and here we have optimization. is has supposed lots of algorithms for optimization, but it doesn't specify the data type of each uh, optimi op optimization algorithm. So once your function is differentiable, you can just use optimization to get the best solution in respect of the data. So we can get data here. We got the uh, neural network inside the infectious uh, spreading in, in, in infectious ports, and we have the data. So we can just use the gradient design with automatic differentiation and then use the uh, optimizations, optimization, uh, uh, optimize, optimizer to get the minimal loss, and we can get uh, the um, the the Bayesian like the best parameter estimation for this process. So we can see the uh, fitted ODE can um, have a very similar curve with the data type. So it's a story end here. We got the model we want. We can simulate the history data, but it's ends here. What we want to know is a village of many infections and with many people infected by the disease, and our model can fit it with the previous data. And the story doesn't end here because, because what we want to know is always predict the future, not predict the history data. So the future is the most important part. What will happen in the day after 14? That's what we want to know. That's why we build the model here. So, how about the extrapolation? How, what if? The, the infected people is more than uh, the history data. What will happen? So when you uh, get the cheat, uh, when we cheat, <laughs> we can actually cheat here. We we already know the Gaussian model is linear. So we can plus the linear data is the theoretically the best solution for the approximator. But if we have for linear model if we have the neural network with more than one layer it supports nonlinearity so after for, uh, so for the extrapolation we will see the neural network will deviate from the theoretical one because it doesn't seem the data here it, we only have the data below the 0 0.15 because it's a historical history date data there is no much people get infected you may say we can get more data here and to get our neural network fitted. Yes, you can, but the whole bridge will get infected for this kind of, it, 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 for this kind of experiment. And for a lot of like instrument de design, like uh, especially for pharmaceutical, you cannot dose the patient to death. So you cannot, you can never get over those data. So you own the data, the data, the data you have is on in the early stage, but how can you predict the extrapolation? So what happens here is that we use too many parameters to estimate the process. It's actually just a linear process. So what we need is an outcomes razor. We need to reduce the size of the neural network. For, for interpolation, a bigger neural network can approximate a lot of complex equations, but for extrapolation, simple strategy. But simple, the, the most simplest model can get the better extrapolation performance. But what we need here is the symbolic 
migration. It's a one of way to reduce the parameter size of open neural network. And the data driven DPQ also supports the algorithm called uh, sparse identification, they call CMB algorithm. Steve. Yeah. J just to, to clarify so this neural network prediction is without uh, the differential equation, just, just data driven. Oh, yeah. Is it uh, just data driven? Yeah. Uh, neural network. Uh, it's this graph is produced by the neural network, so yeah. we can think about the neural network is scheduled the function code, so we can actually just input different data, uh, input data to see how the extrapolate extrapolation works. And cool. so this this is the the already the um, ODE form the neural network, oh. right? That's I mean, just to make sure. Just yeah, it's quite ambiguous here. Uh, this part we just uh, graph the old, the neural network part from the old, old model. So this right. part is only talking about the infectious force. So that's only neural network itself. So we were doing the uh, we were doing the universal differential equation. So we have neural network and OD mixed together. Right. And we train it with the optimizer to right. get the best loss. Right. And then we use this parameter and the neural network to investigate how the new how the infectious force uh, function looks like with the neural network. And with the bonus model, we already know that the infectious force is a linear model. Right. So we we, we can see yeah, it's sure. a linear model uh, in the historical data. So that's what uh, this graph is talk talking about. The neural network is good for the interpolation, the bad for extrapolation. However, for the CMD algorithm, for sparse identification, it requires, it requires a continuous function. But how we, can we get the continuous function below the green line on the left side or over the green line? We only got the data is a discrete point. But now we have a trend neural network, so we have continuous function. So we can apply the symbolic regression with the neural network because he can produce continuous uh, data type data. So we can use the neural network as a sampler of the previous data to augment the date, date, data for the symbolic regression. So that's why we need neural network to surrogate the the model and then use the symbolic regression to retrieve the physical dose inside. And uh, we will go through the this um uh, uh this approach and finally get the linear one in the hands-on session. Right. And so far so good. Any questions? Okay. Comments Maybe other than the Ideas about we will firstly we will have a data we will have an OTE model we only partially know it so we have uh, OTE model with some unknown part then we just replace it with a approximator and then we use the data to train this approximator and if we found our approximator is oversized but no problem we can just in sample more historical data from that approximator and use a symbolic regression to retrieve what's under the hood of the neural network to unravel the black box and get the physical dose of infectious force. Yeah. This is a, this is a difficult problem because you know in general um, you might already know that the relationship is linear and you only want to find the slope, the, the beta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing parameter estimation. Mm -hmm. Here you're doing function estimation. Mm -hmm. You right, yeah. so so it's it's a much much harder problem, yeah. um, and it's very impressive that you can you can find this 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 linear function, yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. the final part of this universal differential equation is to reduce the size of the estimator as right. simple as possible. Then we can get the better prediction to the future, and this is also about. Uh, we're going to refer to Julia today, and uh, you know the application in the industry of Julia is uh, worth noting. And the first one is the CDR EDA. It's uh, uh, it's 
uh, when when it comes to the startups or uh, or just start a new company, you need to beat certain packages. They are widespread in the market, and CDAR is come to beat the spice. Spice is written by C plus plus in nineteen eighty or nineteen nineties, and it is the powerhouse of the analog circuit design. Analog analog circuit design is really hard because the nonlinearity of the circuit, uh, the non 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 nonlinear circuit is really hard. But the CDAR is want to use the differentiable analog circuit. It makes this circuit design differentiable. How it can do it because the automatic differentiation, differentiation uh, the automatic differentiation is the key. Because when we have a function call of the analog circuit, we can just use a source to source automatic differentiation to get a gradient. But why gradient is important? Because when it comes to when it comes to a combination of neural network and and end of circuits, it need to calculate the gradient with this combination function. So the seed idea to try to use this and to do the junior type of, 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 of spice and we can get better uh because it's type type stable so you can get better uh acceleration and you can also combine the machine learning into the design of the EDA view. And the second one is the Pumas AI uh is uh, use the model informed drug de development with the machine learning and why is a competitor of that for pharmaceutical uh, for pharmaceutical industry it usually just uh use the simulation of the chemistry inside the body. So there are a lot of uh, enzymes and drugs interactions in the body. So they, are, they have a lot of OD problems to, to solve. And the no man is a way to solve this kind of OD. And uh, they try to solve this OD with the data. And for the medical healthcare industry, they usually have just 30 or 40 patients in for the data set, so they need to use the basic approach to get the parameter distribution. So they need to assimilate that gigantic OD over and over again. So the no man is written by Fortran. The Fortran has is a really high performance, and they can call the Fortran by R and do the statistics and tell the company whether this clinical trial will work or not. And what is the risk of doing that? But uh, for Pumas AI's uh, pages, they speed up the process with the Julia. They rewritten the Fortran's code into Julia and make this uh, and integrate the machine learning to the, the to this field. The, the, this is what Fortran cannot do because we cannot do machine learning with Fortran. But we, we can do what Fortran can do in Julia and also do the and also implement the machine learning with the universal division equations. So for this time point, we don't need to uh, write the an analytical expression for whole enzyme integration because there are a lot of unknown biological process in the body. So the neural network is the one to surrogate this process and the symbolic re regression is the key to recover the unknown enzymatic interaction. This is the key to the pharmaceutical industry. And so Julia is the best for the high uh, computational demands scientific project. So like macroeconomics, climate change, urban development is also have some education uh, with the Julia. So the final remark is that it's, the Julia has a great compatible design and extensibility. And um, with this state, state of art, Compared to design, we can have uh, impact for applications. And Julia supports a higher level scripts, and we can easily learn like with Python. And I hope this like pre presentation can have get you uh, like overview about Julia and get you interested about the learning more about the Julia. I will leave some more uh, learning materials in my web page, and you have your uh, you can just start from there. So later on, after the 10 minutes break, we'll have a hand-on session. And I'm uh, welcome for the questions here about the presentation. Yeah, yes. Yeah, let's have a break now yeah. of the 10 minutes. Uh, get some water.
Eleven ten. Eleven ten. We can add the reservoir history. Yeah. Mentioned. Actually, we can add the uh, <laughs> yeah. we can add, uh, the applications that we have on there. Uh, how are you? There is a uh, energy and electric zone application. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this, this capability of the uh, function estimation. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Set up. Virginia mm -hmm. National. Uh, okay. <laughs> I said, uh, is there a connection in Portuguese? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 So it's in the project and it's more working on a performance. Basically, it's in there. Maybe else, I was working on a specific model, like as I made integrations, try to look harder at that. Because when you're doing the different order of dimensions, you get a different approach. Right. But the, basically, the Pumas area is trying to use part of papers talking about. They try to use the idea, implement that into the objective model. What's happened on the GitHub open source package is actually some business business behind it. So let me answer a question. So yes, the video will be available. Okay, for you know all the attendees. I'm gonna I'm gonna post the video on the on the um, tutorial web page. Uh, I'll, I'll update the page. With uh, the uh, link to the video, okay. we have here the um, now department. We have a, a colleague who is a big expert in, in drug drug design, uh, protein docking, uh, it's kind of no protein modeling oh. design. Did I, you mention design? I was doing that in my. <laughs> I was doing that. Yeah. We have we have uh, Dr. Yang Sheng here. Dr. Yang Sheng is uh, a world expert in one of the most well known people in this area. Mm -hmm. um, he is very well funded. Um, so if, if you would like, you, 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 you can talk to him mm -hmm. very well because he's, 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 in, he's in my group and now. My group, I used to be in the bio group, uh, biological application group. Now I moved to the computer engineering group, oh. but uh, very, very recently. Mm -hmm. okay. so, I mean, there's no particular reason, it's just because my research now is not much more general, general purpose let's say yeah, uh, it's not it's not uh, just bio. Uh, I, I was let's say 100 percent bio and now i'm like 10 percent <laughs> so it's like between bias more deep into the data and there's always lack of data very noisy data and very very sparse data it's like yeah it's, yeah, that, that, that's, it's hard engineering problem it's very hard engineering problem however this kind of uh um, Work uh, with differential equations uh, allows you to require less data. Yeah. You know, because uh, so this kind of uh, yeah. because uh, we we were working with uh, observation study you know, in cancer research, so it's it's completely data driven. There's, there's no, I mean, so you need a lot of data. Okay? But in this particular problem of uh, drug design, you know, protein. Enzymes, etc. It seems that there's a lot of prior knowledge. Mm. You see, so um, so it's it, it's just a piece of data. Okay, so if you if you would like to, you can talk to Dr. Yangshan mm -hmm. if you 
if you have an inclination to continue this, this line of work, uh, or I guess think, uh, you know, you can take advantage of uh, your your background, uh, but it's completely up to you. So we have lots of ideas, of course. Uh, we have to, you know, pick pick the best ideas not to to go forward. But uh, this 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 could be an opportunity. Uh, so you may want to take a look at this at this uh, publication. Mm -hmm. This stuff, if you think it's interesting, mm -hmm. if you see something that you think uh, you contribute uh, some gap. Contribute. We could set up a meeting if we can uh, talk about it. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's 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 not it's just you know. I'm not going to do anything until until tell me. Also, uh, it uh, because he could be someone who also is part of your uh, committee. So when you when you put together a committee for for a piece of oh, okay. Um, you know, he, he, he could be someone in a committee also. Yeah. So basically, um, so you could take a class with him. Or, but at the same time, if you, let's say, I want to move out of this particular area, I don't want to work with so design anymore. We don't have to do that. Okay. Right. So the idea is that eventually I like such a Career, potential careers, uh, not this is uh, one option. Okay, I, so I really want to do more about fundamental computer things. Absolutely. That's why I think, like, uh, like talking to people who is doing the mathematical model in biology, that we can do more of the It's never that it took about fundamental things because it's all connected to uh, biology. Absolutely. Uh, as part of, as as part of your PhD, you're supposed to, to develop uh, you know uh, a novel fundamental exactly fundamental contribution. It's not just application. You know you have to, so for instance, the mixed precision you know stuff. Yeah, that's that's one possibility. You know, and, and for what you told me about Julia, you know, with this possibility to mix different data types, etc. Uh, Julia already used the mix. Floating point process in diffusion cross e e e equation because you need to use the uh, smaller like flow 16 for the phantom weight of the diffusion equation. And for deep problem, you would change to flow 66. Six, six, right. right. So it's not a new thing. Yeah. Well, right, of course not. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that there is, there is research that we could do uh, how to train these networks, etc. How to uh, apply Bayesian approach for this. And especially when trying to implement new everything, I'm not sure. I haven't done a lot of pipe work in TensorFlow. They have some implementation about it. TensorFlow has a, has, a, has, a, has an implementation of mixed procedure, but it's very limited. I mean, no, I it's, it's, it's float 32 mm -hmm. and float 16. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they have mm -hmm. float 16 for, for part of the new network. Mm -hmm. You have to remember how mm -hmm. it works. Yeah, so the weights are in float 16, the, the activation in float 32, or, or something like that, you know? And so we were actually able to run a, a simulation of a RVA Stokes simulation using this uh, TensorFlow package. It, it, it works very nicely, it's, it's faster, much faster. It's about uh, almost two times faster. I, I don't exactly remember the factor, but it's at least two times, maybe three times faster, you know, um, and full precision. And, and the accuracy is, is, is the same. The same basically. Yeah. So, and it's a very hard problem. It's uh, a very Stokes uh, problem. Uh, to the national flow in time. Uh, and um, it's the one that is on our website. Uh, oh. That demo, you know, the, the, the demo uh, flow around the cylinder. Yeah. Flow around the cylinder. We did that with the mixed precision. It's, it's not a classical, classical, yeah, classical, yeah. classical yeah. problem. So I read the uh, sparse identification, the CD one. Which one? Uh, sparse identification. Sparse identification. First body. Yeah. 
But it's more on the cylinder is a, is a one oh one uh, in, in fluid dynamics. But uh, we did it in mixed precision for for precision uh, grain application. We did uh, we did it in, uh, it, cut, it really cuts down the because it, it took ten hours to uh, enjoy the precision. And in mixed precision, it was much less three 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 hours. So it, it was uh, pretty amazing, and uh, so yeah, I mean, there, there, there's, stuff, there's stuff we can do about this also if you're interested in this kind of architecture. Uh, Thank you. Uh, questions. So let's let's restart so we can finish uh, on time. Uh, let's get to the hands-on session here. So, uh, all this right. Yeah. Yeah. The two things we will need to do for hands-on session. The first, you need to set up the video. You can follow it, this page here <laughs> and step by step to install the Julia and also install the Jupyter notebook with the Julia. So uh, you can follow the steps here. And also you can download the notebooks. And then click the downloads here to get a zip file of the Jupyter notebook. And if you uh, have trouble with setting up your Julia or have uh, you, you you can or you just want to have a view of, of, of all the codes. You can just click the web page here to view it on the website. It's it's basically the same with the zip file. It's sync, so you can view the files here. And you also pr produce a copy paste in integration. So if you have the Julia uh, on your computer, you can copy the code here and to run it. Uh, but yeah, Stephen, can, can you copy, copy and paste the URL into the chat box? Probably. It's the first yeah. part. Thank you. Part one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And yeah, so what we're going to do is to, uh, I will also initiate uh, Jupyter Notebook here. So we're going to uh, run the Julia. You should see the terminals here. It's a Julia terminal. And uh, I assume you have got your iGulia installed. So you can just type import iGulia. So the Julia is called using and initiate Jupyter there here and enter. Then you will have the Jupyter notebook with. Uh, this is kernels. Uh, we will have like um, so. Uh, the best idea is that we can install the um, Julia and use the iJulia to install the Jupyter notebook, and then we, we can get the Jupyter kernels here. That's why we will need to uh, we need to use iJulia as a bridge. So basically, uh, let's have a look about the uh, folders here. We have two uh, notebooks. I strongly recommend you if, uh, to run all the sales now because we need some time for the pre compilation. Mm -hmm. Then after you run it, you can listen my a little tool about the pro project. So let's do it. We just click it, run all sales here. And for a second, Jupyter is a different kernel. So we just run all the cells here. So we can uh, do it require some time to um, for the pre-combination. Pre if you're running, uh, this kernel is already initiated before this 
So let, let me restart it and click run of sales. It will take some time for initiation. And I you get your GPN started. All right. So I just continue to introduce the, how uh, some basics, basics of, about Julia. On the left side is a project folders. And like in Python, we have code dot in environment. So when you're writing a project, you need to specify what page you are using, what version it is to, to, uh, to, uh, to make your project reproducible. So about this, we need to activate environment with the, uh, in Python, we have Conda, but in Julia, there is a package manager just embedded in Julia itself. It's called PKG. And we can activate the tutorial uh, environment and what's under the hood. In under the tutorial folder, we have a project demo. It specify all the package we need for this tutorial. And we can use the compat compatibility section to specify the version of the software we want to use. Um, so, and the other file is called manifest. Once we specify the package we want to use, we will have a manifest tomo. Is uh, so we have only five packages here, but each package requires other packages. So it will have some interaction between different packages. So the manifest is a uh, is a way to specify how the package you what is the structure of the package you, 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 you need for this project. And this can be different from one computer to another because some packages have implemented the Mac in a certain version, it's a that is one, but in the Windows, it may, may be older version. So it's, uh, so we basically, we, we always show the part, part, project tower, but the manifest is optional. When is the, uh, what is the time to share the manifest tomo is when you're producing the papers. You need to make your Julia code reproducible. And that time, you need to share the manifest tomo to show what is the page exactly installed in your computer. So let's go, uh, let's go to detail about the Julia basics. I hope it's bigger enough. It's big enough? Yeah. And so for first part, we need to activate in the environment. And then we need to run the instantiate to get those packages installed. And this, uh, this is a showcase of how to approach the package manager. You can use the uh, right bracket with a, a ST to list all the status about the packages and the versions here. Uh, so it's, just carry out about the importing packages. Um, like Python, you will need to import that NumPy or uh, a certain package you, you, you want. Julia supports two kinds of importing, like using and import. For use, using command, you don't need to specify the namespace because Julia uses the multiple dispatch. It can find the best function to run. So it doesn't need namespace. But if you want to force the next space, you can use import. So we're just using all the pages here. And if we want, we can uh, we can ignore the next space here. And the, the uh, one thing to learn, Julia, is that if you have any function you don't know how to use it, use the question mark here. And run it, you can get the original document documentation about the functions. And let's talk about the multiple dispatch. This one is a exponential term. And we have to implement a lot of packages here. And let's see how many methods have implemented for exponential. So we can see uh, they are uh, just embedded like floats 16, 32, 64, in that type for exponential, and there are also other library implement the exponentials here. So when we call it with the uh, the uh, certain constant struct 
from the ACI annual library, we will use this function and not the original one. So it's called multiple dispatch. patch. And for uh, start from scratch, it's, uh, it's a showcase about how to run the simple text here and, and how to define variables and how to know the type of those variables here. We can use the type of uh, functions. And this is how to define the functions here. It's a generic function, A plus B. And the second part is for the reference items. Do you think you are losing now or anyone uh, if you cannot catch up or can do anything again? Are you guys able yeah. to, to run this? Yeah, you, you, you have two options. One is uh, you're on the web page, the other just run the codes with, with me or just see the, uh, the screens here. Yeah. Is it multiple dispatch equivalent to the dear command on the Python when you list all the uh, uh, dependencies on the object oriented? Uh, it's uh, uh, the model dispatch is listing all the functions, and in the Python, it's listing all the uh, function under the namespace. Okay. So it's object, uh, the elements under the object. But for Julia, it's all the functions here. Mm -hmm. So the functions is the major rule function of programming. And in Python, the major rule is object. We have a car, we have a wheel in the car. So if you, you use a car that you can get the wheel and the chairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Julia, it's just, just like uh, you type like, the, the wheel and you can get like a Costco wheel or HP wheel, lots of wheels there and just choose one. Yeah. So it's a different ideas. Well, the font, all object and font of programming. Right, so let's carry on. And uh, we have a ribbons items is like this here. And uh, we can use the end command to get the last item. And this is the most like uh, annoying part. The Julia starts from one, I just said meant that. This is designed for mathematical process, mathematical uh, like to implement some algorithms. If you look at the introduction to Ericsson book, it's a way also starts from one because when you implement the Ericsson, you, you, you don't need to come consider about uh, the n minus one. You can just one to n, not zero to n minus one. So you can know, use start from one. And uh, this is a showcase about how to get one to two. It's very similar to Python. And we got another implementation of n. And this time we have specified the parameters. Like we can use, we can specify a is belongs to the abstract factor because we want to make the element wise a in this function. And the previous, fun pre previous function a only supports scalar. And we want to make another function called a is for element wise a. So for this part, we can specify the parameter to be extra factor. This is for indicate, for take the multiple dispatch, they can find the best end uh, to call the A and T. If A and B is an extra factor, you will use this function. If they are scalar, they will use the previous one. And inside this function, how to do the element-wise A is to use a broadcast. The book has seen the A plus B with a dot here. It's actually doing the element wise end. So you may want to ask is this faster than for loop? Uh, in Julia, in, in Python, factorize is faster. You can use NumPy factorize to make your code to de avoid the for loop. But in Julia, it's the same. It totally depends on you think a for loop is easier or broadcasting is. Uh, looks more elegant in your code. They are the same. So it doesn't matter. So we can use this function to get element wise editing or also using the broadcasting to do the same thing. And we have a uh, dictionary here. It is basically used for like a pen, like for data grants or store some data. And how about the iteration? Just like Python. Just a for loop. And we can use each index to specify 
all the index here. But why you don't know each index works? How do you, how do you know how it works in Julia? Use a question mark. The question mark can, can retrieve the original documentation. And then you can learn how to use the each index in the folder. So this is the basic about the Julia, just syntax and simple interface about how to use it. Let me check the comment section. All right. Nobody asking. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. And uh, so the, the next session, we're going to talk about the composite type and multiple di 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 dispatch. Remember that we are doing the functional programming, so there is no object called cars. They are actually implement a lot of wheels or chairs. So the function is a major thing, but how to uh, uh, how 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 to get the hierarchy of the data is by the type system. And here is how the FB type and concrete type uh, implement in Julia. We have fundamental integers and flows 64 plus 32 here. And we also have the abstract type to conclude this data type together to build a tree. Like abstract flow is all the flows under this actual type. Actual typing have no concrete type implementation. It, also, it, it, it is a bad for all the concrete type. So here is an example of how to use a customized type. type. We can uh, define an actual type co coordinate and use an implement concrete type called point one is a 2D coordinate. It has X and Y in its data. It's a struct. A struct uh, is a customized data, data type. So it, it has two uh, data inside this data, this uh, data format. And the most recommended way to create a struct here is to use uh, the prom, to use parameter, to use a parameterized type key. So this can tell the because for the coordinates, the X and Y, will they have different format? No, they will have the same format. If the X is, is integer, then Y is integer as well. So we need to tell the compiler X and Y have the same data type, data format. So we can use T here. All right, is there any questions so far? Yeah, this, the syntax is, uh, you know, may not be familiar to to most of us, but yeah. I, th I think we can follow what what you're what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. And basically, just uh, we can use it, it's a little bit detail about how to tell the compiler the detailed things like how to make the the data type to be stable. And then we we will need to when when we have a customized data type point one and point two, we will need to. Uh, make these two data types to be edible. And this function is extends with the plus. When you write C, you may familiar with operator overloading or Python as well. There's also operate, uh, operator overloading. And Julia is similar, uh, but it's in functional pro programming design. We were broadcasting this plus, use the multiple dispatch to find the best. Uh, class function for the argument A and T. So this is the extension of the class function. We specify T is belongs to the subtype of the coordinate. And there are two concrete types here. So we can write this function for uh, point one adding or point two adding, but we'll but just write this single function and just specify it belongs to the subtype of the coordinate. So were we doing the adding with the uh, two uh, point one data type here, you can actually get is actually running uh, this function. So this which is uh, used to specify what project company is running in Julia. It's a macro. Uh, it's a, a macro means it can convert your code to another code. It's a, another secret about Julia. Why Julia looks really elegant 
and it's not cumbersome to implement certain things because it uses macro to run your code to become another. It is like you write a script with a macro the decoration, and then your script will become another script for a certain process. So it's sounded and so something really special syntax when it comes from Python, you will not work for familiar with it's a micro usage. Right. So we have go through the cost and pipe. Is there any problems on yeah? The best idea is to show about some essential feature about Julia and especially just cling to more uh, mention about the multiple dispatch and some these are very specific to Julia. Any questions so far? All the sections? No? All right. So we can do the plotting here. So it's basically define the functions here. And uh, we can use the exclamation uh, symbol to specify it's a, per it's a permutive function. Because when you use the du here, it actually changed after the function code. When then all, when uh, the the argument can be changed in the function code. It's called the per, per, permutative functions, and we can simulate the functions and plot it with a plot. Uh, right, and the final uh, part is we are going to talk about the per, per most tips because Julia is fast. It's only if you write the code in a certain way. If you not if if, you, if there are some case if you create some uh, type is the beauty or the uh, some like a uh, memory allocation it can largely store your uh, make your code store so how to get Julia fast in your script there are two main things one is avoid avoid heap allocation there are two types of memory stack and heap and stack is fast, but it has limited memory. But for heap, it's a lot of memory in the like, assigned by, by the operating system, but it is uh, stored. So when we have created three uh, 100 plot multiply with 100 metrics, and we want to do the element wise uh, edit, and we can uh, look at these two functions. Um, the first functions they produce a memory allocation because um, uh, it allocates the VAL variable, and for each iteration, it need, need to allocate the VAL in the heap. So it will produce like uh, ten thousand allocation for this process. But the second is a mutating function. Uh, it mutated the C here to assign VAL's value to C. So VAL is basically the, just the call by, re, call by reference. So it doesn't produce any new memory in the for loop. It will make your codes much faster in 14 times for this case. So this is a big uh, uh, deep difference in the performance, but just some caveats here. And another way to speed up, speed up your code is by the type is the to avoid type instability. Look at this code. It's, but this syntax is the same with the C. Like if we generate a number smaller than 0 0.5, then use the out as the return. If bigger than 0 0.5, use the flow 64. So for the compiler, it doesn't know what's the data type of the output. We can use the code worm type, this macro, to know what is going on under the hood. It will warn you the output will be when, when you use the argument as two and five, the output will, will be flow 64 or integer 64 is a union. So it will always call the biggest one in the return. So it will allocate the biggest format here. It's a type, it's a union type. So the type is a bit it will slow down your code because you need to allocate more memory in each function code. And pop. When we think of how about we think about this function? What will be the return data type? If we call the algorithm with two and five integers, 
and return type will be four. Uh, no, smaller and out. So it will be integers for this one. But it's in the three. Well, it is a in a conditional return will com compare the notices. So the answer is yes, the compiler will know how to get the best answer. So this part going on, uh, like so sort the of magic of how the compiler de design you actually know how to get the right, the uh, optimized function code for this approach. Sure. So there are many methods to do this and uh, um, like to speed up the code, like to just remove the inbound for for Inline methods like you may familiar with it in C plus plus and some CPU speed up. It's pretty much the best for Julia. All right, any questions about the types? I can maybe mm -hmm. turn just for uh, a little bit uh, on the top. When you uh, define it as T, mm. uh, or you uh, define it A and B as T, mm. you is it uh, is it mean you're just uh, define any type mm. can be defined uh, state or T, right? Yeah, as yeah. T. But okay. uh, uh. you don't say it's an uh, integer or flow, you just say mm. it means it must be in the same type. Mm. Uh, the RAN function we can output in. Uh, I'm not sure, but when you are not sure about data type, just use the type. And you can also show, show. yeah, the data type is ah, okay, okay. And because it's a really big matrix, mm -hmm. it will be in a heap. And if you want to force this variable in stack, mm -hmm. you can use uh, the package called static array. It will force your variable in the stack. But you have to watch out. Stack is faster, but it's uh, the memory is limited. So why allocate variable in stack is important. When you're trying to do anything really small in your network and doing the Bayesian iteration interference, you need to sample the neural network again and again. In that case, when you allocate the neural network in the stack, it will become much faster than in the heap. So that, that is how state uh, uh, the real works in the dual label. So sometimes you will need the speed up with the stick, not in the heap. Steve, we have a, a little over oh, 20 over. minutes. So yeah, I think we're gonna have to, to pick one of the two uh, demonstrations. I mean, one of the two okay. uh, yeah. hands-on. Let's have a, let's go just continue with a hands-on session about universal different equations. And I have picked the wrong here. So yeah. it's basically, uh, we will just go through what presentation talk about. We will have a bonus model and we will have the UD uh, with the one layer neural network and second part will be with the multiple layer neural network. And we will have uh, a, like important packages here and this is all model. This is what you see in the slides, just Implement the conscious models here, and then we can solve the ODE problem and to get the same, the same curve in the pre presentations. And uh, to get the uh, to, to and we add some noise to the data, we use pop pass noise because it's a discrete how many people get infected. So, discretized data type, we use a pop pass on to add the noise here. And this is all data. And we also have the neural network about the unknown mechanism. So this part is uh, what need to be more, uh, more like description. The, what, the, num the lambda and n is the approximator with the of unknown process. We want to know the infectious force in respect of infectious group, beta and gamma, and to to know how the how, how, how the uh, the infectious group will be uh, growing in respect of time. 
So for this part, we need a neural network. And this is a box, is a package for building the neural network. And we just build a one one that's there is a linear real estate. So this is a, like for the simplest model, but it's just a coincidence. It just sand as the quantum model. It also be linear. So we can expect this model can get the right answer and have have perfect extrapolation. But just let's do this this process. So we create the neural network here and put it in the ODE functions. So this one is the universal differential equation. And the so to solve in this is basically the same like the in the first section, like just do the ODE problems here and it can be solved with the solve API in the digital equation dot dot area. And to solve uh to um like to calculate the loss, we need a prediction function. So here uh, we use a solve function in a pre predict function and make it an uh, array to compute loss in, in respect of the data. And the loss function is implemented here. You can see uh, you can use the initial value and go through the prediction function with the ODE problem and calculate the loss between the data. So this is how the basic basic setup to define how to the do network, the universal different equations, and we define the prediction function and use the prediction function to calculate the loss with the data. So it's basically the, the setup for the machine learning tests. So we can uh, use a callback to uh, record the doses and this one is the automation, the training part. So it's not even speaking that for optimization that is not designed only for machine learning. It's designed for generic optimization. We can just use optimization that .zero to train for universal differential equation. It's not only trained with your, the ODE, it's trained the neural network inside the ODE and all together. So this is an in integration between the packages. So we can get the dose here and for the data. So then, uh, we can get the minimizers is the best so, 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 so solution in respect of the data. And we can find our model just perfect fit with the pre 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 previous observation. And he has a perfect linear relationship. Why? Why? Because we use the linear convolutional neural network. And our conscious model is linear, so it will be perfect extrapolation. But we always want the biggest uh, neural network as big as possible in our re re research. So there are some scenarios that we may want to use the multiple layer neural network to get the better performance in the training data set. So what probably happened here, just what I said in the presentation, we will have a very bad extrapolation. But for beginning, if we have multiple layer neural network that basically just run the same pipeline and also build the ODE problems again and to train the neural network. For this part, I need to uh, explain is that the new universal differential equation is still a differential equation. There is instability in certain region. If your some turn get into negative, it will be infinite in the end. So uh, when we use the optimization method, you can sometimes go into the region that is unstable. And but it's fine once it gets to certain local minima, we can still get a good answer. Yeah. So there are lots of like a uh, bit of warning. And in the end, we can get the same loss with the, uh, the previous linear model. Because the training, uh, we are using a multi-layer neural network with the data, but it can still be trained uh, in the training state. So we can still get nice interpolation because we've already seen the data and we can use it to, uh, we can see the, the, the model is fitted with the training data set. But however, 
just like what I say, I say in the presentation, to deviate in the extrapolation is we use too much parameters in, in this neural network. So the question is there, we have a data in the left part of the green line and how to use, mm -hmm. Stephen, uh, yeah. how, how fast is uh, the training process of these data networks? I mean, yeah. is it, uh, I mean, would you be able to run in real yeah. time? Uh, yeah, I can run. It, it's a simple trick case, so it's not too. Uh, when, you, when we run in, we can use the time to calculate how much time. That's quite right fast. Yeah. yeah. So let's expand. Uh, uh, nine point seven seconds for yeah. seven hundred six hundred and seventy iterations. Yeah, that's fast. Uh, but when you think about it, uh, we are using the uh automatic differentiation, so we don't need to calculate the differentiate the time steps. The function just calculate the 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 differentiated by the the uh by the function code, like auto cycles here. And um, yeah, if you change auto cycle to time steps, you'll become really slow, uh, really, really slow because you need to calculate the time steps in each iteration. But auto cycle generate the differential type of function. So you transfer, convert the function to be differential function, it's cool. So, it's coding the function to calculate the gradient. So it's much faster. Oh, much. Thank you. Yes. It's a difference here. Uh, I'm going a little bit fast here, but just trying to show what I'm saying in the presentation and how to make it implemented here. And so the final part is like we want to make our neural network smaller. This is something like you were able. You certainly heard about it because all the people will say, try to make your neural network bigger. But this time, you try to make your neural network smaller because you have really worse extrapolation. How to do it? We need to use the model discovery with a symbolic equation. Uh, and for, yeah, it, it's an it, it, it example to, to achieve the model the discovery interpretation and have better extrapolation at the same time. So we basically use the trend model here. Like we have, uh, we want to know how the inflation people and inflation force are created in the data. We can uh, use the grid size of the, the inflation people. We can simply a stance as we can. It doesn't matter because we have fitted neural network here. We use a fitting neural network to generate all kinds of trend data. It's a data augmentation process because for symbolic regression, we need a very dense data to capture the, uh, the dynamics. And for symbolic regression, we'll need the basics. Like we are certain, we assume the infectious people and infectious force have polynomial effect or exponential or cosine or sine, any whatever uh, function form you want, you can insert these passes. And the Cindy, the sparse activation here is try to combine all kinds of passes or functions to get the best answer with this function. And we assume that infectious force will be related to constant, polynomial, sine, cosine, exponential, and we use these passes to capture the best presentation of the neural network. What is happening under the hood of the neural network? You, you should mention that this is uh, the Julia syntax, you know, this symbolic, this uh, oh, yeah. you know, Greek letters, and they're all uh, oh, yeah. part of the oh, Julia okay. syntax. Okay, the Greek yes. letter. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right. Uh, in Julia, you will see. We can you can support okay you can support uh like Greek syn uh LaTeX syn syntax or even yeah. emoji here uh so when you uh build this variable how to type it uh, how to 
questions. You, 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 when it comes in terms of how the questions, you need to think about the question mark. Then you will tell you just type like this way. Then you can get like X head, then head. Then you can get this pretty simple. Yeah. So just answer with the question mark. And you can even uh, use the emoji here. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> yeah, just make a bit all of this is yeah. legal syntax. Yeah, uh, yeah. Legal, because it, it, it's in Spotify <laughs> and years ago, yeah. there the, it, the, it supports emoji and graphics. So it it's good, especially for economics or mathematics. Mathematics, yeah, yeah. They really want their code to be more comprehensible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the variables here is uh, a, it's so to produce. It's basically like SimPy. There is a SimPy in Julia. It's called modeling to a kit. It supports a lot of like high efficient symbolic manipulation. And this is another method to pr produce the variable u because we have only one. Parameter for this neural network is one input is inflation people, the output is inflation force. So there's only one input, but we want to know the uh, how uh, how this function form looks like. So we will need to use a CMD algorithm. It's basically like we use, we uh, create an optimizer here and create a problem struct and solve it with the. Uh, the data driven solve. So the solve here is actually coding the data driven, not the differential equations. It's uh, by the end of multiple dispatch. patch. So we can get the function form is actually a linear so solution. We discover it's actually a linear so so solution. Even we we are guessing it maybe have some relation with sine or sine over e exponential, but this linear solution is the best. To describe the, the, this data, so the final equation we will get is actually in, 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 in pressure force is actually p one multiplied with with u one, and we can just use this uh, relationship with the data set again. Like here, we got the fitted model here, and we 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 reduce the same the uh. We, we replace the new network with a sim simpler linear model, and we can get the exact what we want for the conscious model. So, in previously, we will have a uh, uh, hidden layer, new network with a hidden layer. So, there's non linearity in the extrapolation. But we use the Cindy algorithm to recover the dynamics behind under the hood of this hidden layer. And then we cover the linear relationship of the inflation force and the effective group. And finally get the one monstrous model because it's better. Yeah, so the, the first one is sort of like a non-parametric regression where you can get any that's non-parametric. Whereas the second one it's a parametric regression uh, based on some basis functions. Mm -hmm. So like it's a linear basis function. Mm -hmm. It's a linear basis function model. Right. Yeah, it's a I mean, linear basis function model. Yeah, and exactly. Uh, for first one and second one, yeah. have a hidden layer, so it's not linear. Exactly. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. yeah. Especially for the long truth is linear, so we will get the best for the yeah. first one. But for the linear one, we still get the best in very good performance in the training set. But for extra collision, it's not the case. So for that part, we uh. We always need to reduce our model. Absolutely, as absolutely. As yes, absolutely. There's a hypothesis called lottery ticket hypothesis. There's always a smaller neural network of the yeah, trend neural right. network, that's and right. uh, they they also use a, a certain algorithm called Occam's net. And here we use the symbolic regression. It's another way to get your model smaller. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a um, this um, uh, discovery discovery uh, PD discovery mm -hmm. right or OD discovery in this case where you are basically you have a library of terms mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and essentially are discovering mm -hmm. 
uh, which is the right term or the combination of terms. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like an ODE discovery. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is there a question in the conversation? No. Yeah. Any questions and comments here? And uh, if uh, you are really get interested in Julia, uh, you can get to the evidence here. And uh, there are uh, a lot of resources you can learn from this page. Just click anyone you like. And if you like to learn, would like to learn like optimization, there's a book uh, introduced to optimization with Julia then with Julia implementation. Why it is why you choose Julia is because if you introduce your algorithm with Python, that's slow. If you introduce your Python with C, that's impossible to come. That is incomprehensible. So it, it used Julia because the Julia is a way to, to write everything and also provide the efficiency. And there are also communities to they are uh, discussing there are a lot of debate over just uh, have, you can ask them yeah. there because people will just it might be the, one of the best features of Julia, right? Is this community because they are very passionate, right? And they are very about, passionate about Julia. Yeah. If you can and try the C community, yeah. they will be, they will be uh, <laughs> probably more willing to help uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. a newcomer yeah. than you know yeah. any beginners. And so for and, me. And sometimes the the inventor of the Julia will just come into the post yeah, and that's that's the Byron Shaw, Ben 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 Ben, yeah, ben Zong, right. they are very uh, active in the community. Exactly. And there are some courses here, and I really recommend quantitative economics. It's, it write really good tutorial for the Julia. And there are some theory understanding is the best is for Julia documentation, but it's really technical. You can also start from the thing Julia's here. So that's basically about uh, all the materials you, you, you need are already delivered, and I hope you were interested in Julia and for your future projects. It's a great resource, you know. I mean, so you, you, of course, this is a permanent uh, page on, mm -hmm. on your GitHub, so anyone can yeah. can come back and, 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 and it's yeah, it's a new language, so it's really hard to find learning materials. Yeah. Sounding material is really too simple to get an idea about you, and sound is too hard to uh, out of school, but it's all uh, what I chose is really highly recommend for the Julia. Absolutely. I mean, of course, uh, this is a two hour tutorial. So, you know, you have to go out and continue your exploration and, uh, you know, explore these resources, you know, and, uh, uh, but you, uh, the hope is that you have a good start. You have a good place to start. And you, and most importantly, you, you you have been convinced that Julia is actually something that is worth uh, exploring further and 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 can, could be useful. So I think that was the purpose of this uh, tutorial. You know, I hope uh, uh, I I, th I think I'm pretty sure that this was accomplished. Because I can speak for myself. You know, I I'm really interested now in <laughs> learning more about uh, Julia and. Uh, you know, so um, any questions? Uh, I have a question. I have a question for the Jupyter notebook, the, the one you have the symbolic. Symbolic what? And that you said, like you said, psi equals to u. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that part, the basics. Basis. Yeah. Is it, what does it mean, uh, like okay. psi one to My one is the output, and the p1 you mean one is. Originally, a neural network it has uh, several parameters, and for the we just use the a sparse of identification from that the neural network is actually describing a linear relationship. Yeah, yeah. So this is. So what about how do you define all the bases? Uh, the basis is we can guess. We need to make assumption. The the, the physical law is maybe. Uh, certain so polynomial sine cosine or exponential is the common terms in epidemiological model. And we're going to save some custom design nonlinear functions as a basis. So all kinds of basic can be put into 
your assumptions thing. Try to get best things. Yeah, I think I think the first one is linear. I was question about it, like the, yeah, from the second to six. The flow model is linear. It's linear. Oh. The go go from choose model is linear here. As you can see, linear model. Okay. This beta multiplied with i, so it's linear model. It, 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 it is not a, it's not a, not a linear OD system because there's multiplication of S and I. Yeah. But said, the parameters are linear. Yeah. It's a linear mechanism inside a nonlinear OD system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> so thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. Um, so if you have further questions, uh, you know, you can always uh, oh, yeah. reach uh, out to we reach out and we I also have put the uh, comment sessions here. You can just leave your comments here and we can also approach to the website here and there's a discussion panel, but actually the discussion here is direct synced with that. Okay. So you can just leave your message here, your ideas and some comment. You can do this if it developing a lot of things to change year from year. Yeah. Oh months for months. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for, for attending and uh, I, I hope this was useful. So I'll see you around. Okay.